Sweet. This will be a little different. Um, and I guess we can kind of just get into it. I mean, we could probably even use – some people like to hear the testing. So okay. We'll if we want to keep it in or not. Perfect. But, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, this is going to be a little bit different podcast for me just because normally I really like to – I set a specific topic, questions – and a purpose for sure. a podcast. This has a purpose because it's kind of like a promotion <laughs> about SGA precedent. Sure. But I don't I don't know too, too much about you. I Kay. haven't mm-hmm. researched you. Like some people I really like. I look at their LinkedIn, their Instagram. Yeah, I, I actually, I, I think I have about. one follower on LinkedIn. <laughs> one follower. <laughs> so, yeah. Very active. Yeah. yeah um, so. so active. Very active. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I guess we'll just get started with, um, first off, guys, thank you for oh. tuning in. <laughs> I have Landon Heft here today. That's the right way to say it, yep. correct? Yep. Um, he's running for SGA president at Cedarville University. Um, we're just going to pick his brain, see what his campaign is about, what his experience at Cedarville has been, and just see, uh, figure out about this guy here. So I'm excited for this conversation. We're currently in Panda Express hey, we are. here in the SSC, uh, kind of a new location, um, fulfilling my... Uh, goal of being in like every spot at Cedarville having a podcast <laughs> so we'll go find a janitor's closet one how time. many buildings are you at so far I'm at um BTS okay Milner uh SSC twice okay um, is this is three then this is the second in the okay. SSC okay and then I've been in Brock so I got a lot in of dorms Brock. to do okay um I've done like my room um, got it Parker would be cool that'd like, be cool up in the study room areas yeah yeah and that would be fun. So and do it in the new dorm next year. Oh, that would be yeah. good. The <laughs> school of business building. That's where I really want to oh, do. On the steps, on the, you know? Or the balcony. On the outside. Oh, the balcony. That'd be, that'd be the cool. The wind would be awful, but we could figure <laughs> that's it true. out. That'd be sick. Maybe, yeah, that'd be interesting, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, well, let's, let's dive into you. Okay. A little background, how you came to Cedarville. I really like to have people share how they found out about the school, decided okay. to come here. So. Take so a little bit of a funky story. Yeah. So I was very much like planning on doing engineering and then okay. going and getting my law degree. Mm-hmm. Um, was not, honestly, I didn't even know Cedarville existed. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw, but I'm from two hours north. So do okay. you know where Finley, Ohio is? Uh, not exactly. Okay. Yeah. So okay. if you get on I-75 and just mm-hmm. go straight north, okay. like hour and a half, two hours, depending on how fast nice. you drive. <laughs> um it's like right there. Okay. So it was just funny. Like I had never heard of Cedarville, okay. but then wound up here. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, do you know what my major is right now? Uh, biblical studies. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So biblical studies, get my MDiv. Um, okay. And so just with that, like I was planning engineering and then getting my law degree yeah. was not looking at Cedarville at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and then probably, probably my senior year was like, Hey dad, like, I don't think I can not go into ministry, but like, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> so, um, my dad's an elder at our church. So kind of always grown up in the church. Um, but I haven't like that, that wasn't ever on my radar of like, okay. Oh, like it was actually doing ministry. Yeah. yeah. It's like engineering or like my uncle's a lawyer in Indianapolis and it's like, Oh, he makes a lot of money. Let's yeah. do that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so, yeah. um, and then senior year kind of switched. My dad was like, all right, well, like, we need to find a school then. Mm. Um, so I visited Cedarville once. Like, first place I visited, visited here once. Uh, I get on the tour, and they prayed at the start. I started crying. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> um, we walk into chapel on yeah. the tour still. I start crying <laughs> again. It's like, crap. Um, sure. But, yeah, so I, that's kind of, like, from there, like, that day, I was like, Hey, Dad, like, I'm coming here. So, okay. just kind of funny how that all worked out. Plus, like, I, don't know, I love it now because it's like I, I'm a tour guide right now. Yeah. And so it's like to be able to have that same opportunity with like random guests is really neat. So, nice. Yeah, I've had a blast with that. But, yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, what was you say like the determining factor for Cedarville? Did you visit any other schools or was I didn't, Cedarville? And that was I it? didn't visit anywhere else. Oh, wow. Like, visited here. The, like the one time actually well by the end of it i visited here four times because yeah. it was like well if i can get out of school it's an excused absence yeah, and, and i get to come to visit. cedarville it's like okay why wouldn't i do that nice. so um but visited here the one time it was like i'm in and wow. that yeah that's it like i so i i live in finley there's the university of finley is there oh, is there yeah, as yeah. well okay. um just for reference so they're in conference mm-hmm. um but I, yeah, I didn't even look anywhere else. Nice. So, it's yeah. interesting. So, being a tour guide, 
Yeah, that's like the full reversal of like what really got you going here to Cedarville yeah. and being able to share that with other kids, share the yeah. campus. That's really cool. So like yesterday was all access day. Yeah. It was like I was out in the parking lot. It was 7.30. Like, hey. <laughs> and so it's just, it just kind of funny. Like just the, the switch in the last two years mm -hmm. even of like I was utterly terrified coming here and then cried on a tour. Yeah. And then yesterday it's like, I was the terrifying person. <laughs> You're the terrifying person who's carrying all of the not awake teenagers yes. at 7.30 yeah, in the yeah. morning. <laughs> it's like, hey, get your AirPod come out. On. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> yeah. Nice. But, wow. Yeah, so that's good. interesting. So you're a sophomore now going yep. into junior year. Yep. Um, obviously now involved with campus experience a lot because tour guides is part of campus experience. It's not. It's that's not. part of admissions. Oh, admissions. So, okay, part of yeah. admissions. Interesting. So what all are you involved in? with Cedarville currently sure. beyond just being a tour guide. Yeah. So tour guide, obviously, like you just said, mm -hmm. um, I want to save that one for later. Yeah. Um, but then I'm also, sorry, I'm totally blanking now no. on what, it, yeah. okay. I'll restart Are my little. Are you in charge of the Sting group? Yeah. I so, saw, yep. like, I've gotten like yeah. a couple emails in the past few weeks. I've sent you like two planning. emails. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the first one was like Lightning McQueen. The second one was like oh, yeah. Jumanji type yeah, yeah. vibe. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, I'll be the Sting director this upcoming year. Mm -hmm. Or one of. It's me, Ali Schleckbeer, mm -hmm. and then Olivia Butterworth. Yeah. Um, so we're super excited about that. Nice. Um, additionally, kind of the same summer type vibe. Um, I'll be here all summer. Um, okay. as a summer team lead nice. so it's me and Rebecca Sauer okay. um, we'll be doing that together so nice. we're pretty excited about that too um, but then also I'm a, I'm a D group leader um, Radically Whole has been our book this year we're going through James yeah. um, had a great time with that <laughs> um, the people pe pe yeah people are behind you make yeah. sure they distract us yeah. um, I also I work at the gym so I work at the front desk over there okay. um so if you come in on Sundays, I'm there the whole day. Okay, you're so Sunday. yeah, c come say hi. <laughs> nice. But um, I'm totally. Oh yeah, I'm the sophomore class president right now. Okay, um, nice. That's just been an awesome opportunity to be yeah. serving. So right now we're working on So Fresh stuff. Okay, it's like oh boy, this is a lot. So everybody should come to So Fresh. It's gonna so be fresh. a blast. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. So what? Being well, obviously you're fairly involved in the multiple different things. Sure. Uh, being a sophomore class president, so that's yeah. on student council. Yep. Um, what has your experience with that been? Mm -hmm. um, just so you obviously ran as freshman, came into it. Um, what have you learned from it so far? Sure. Um, I think I think I've learned a few things. So I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna kind of go th yeah. go through this funny. Um, the one, I think it's been an awesome opportunity to meet some really, really cool people. Yeah. Um, I think the rest of our team is absolutely incredible. Like, love them. Yeah. Seth, Seth is leaving in like 50 days. And it's, it's a little bit devastating because, like, so Seth's the senior class yeah, president. Yeah, I just had right? lunch with him the other last week. Okay, perfect. I think. No, on Tuesday. On and Tuesday. That was great to hear yeah. from him, to hear his experience as yeah. a senior. So, guy. like, I don't know. I, I absolutely love him. Yeah. And so just like being able to grow some of those friendships um, yeah. has been really, really neat. Um, so enjoy that side of things. Also just from like a leadership standpoint and mm -hmm. like being able to like, like delegate a little bit. It's yeah. like, I don't know that I was the yeah. best at that or even like time management stuff or anything. Mm -hmm. And so just like being able to come into that and like learn because you don't have a choice. It's like, yeah. you're either going to get better at this or you're not going to do your job well. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. Being able to grow in that way, it's been really neat as well. So, yeah, because you have the vice president, um, not necessarily underneath you, but they're helping you. You're yeah. learning to delegate with them. Yeah. Then you have the chaplain, um, and then helping them with setting up chapel. Yeah, um, you, you have two chapels. A year, correct? Yeah, so one each semester. so senior, junior, and sophomore classes have two chapels, um, and then freshman classes the one in the spring. So okay. that's coming up soon too. Yeah. So, um, but yet not just even with that, like how we kind of, well, I think we run our team at least is like. It's not like, oh, President, I'm, I'm yeah. here, <laughs> and then everybody else is like, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Like, it's like, no, we're, we're people working together to try to better serve the sophomore class at Cedar yeah. Bowl. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to try to do that well, and I think that looks like, oh, hey, like three of us are guys. Like if Livy's saying the girls aren't going to like this, we should probably listen to her. Yeah. Or like me, Ethan, and Livy are all Bible majors. Oh, yeah. It's just like if Eli says, hey, you guys are – getting like like this is a little bible-y the general student body isn't gonna like this <laughs> it's like, okay <laughs> we'll listen to you nice. so i don't know it's we try to avoid the like 
what I say goes, and we're going to work towards yeah, like that. A higher yeah, yeah. yeah. Order. It's interesting. I don't. I don't think that that's the best way to be. Yeah. Running this. So. Yeah. Work as a team. Yeah. Servant leadership. That's one thing I've really tried to be an older sibling. Yeah. And then also just uh, being a captain of a soccer team throughout high school. Sure. Um, learning the best way to lead. So trying to yeah. figure out what works best for you as a person, and like modeling yourself after the way Jesus led. Really. Yeah. Is he was the ultimate servant. But he's also the ultimate leader. Yeah. Which is cool. And same for David in certain aspects. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just trying to figure out what works best. Um, and then not having like arrogance or pride within it. Because like one of the like, God hates that. Yeah. Like desperately hates that. So it's, it's like, I don't deserve any glory. No. Because I'm a broken sinner. Yeah. <laughs> but God deserves all the glory. Yeah. And so I think it's, I think it's really important that as we're working um, to be. As, especially in leadership roles, I yeah. think it can be very easy and tempting to be like, "Oh, I want the glory here because, like, I did it." Yeah. It's like, no, oh, <laughs> like yeah. that's not what you we're going it. for here. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. So, your sophomore class president, what inspired you um, for SGA president? Sure. To want to run, and then further, like, what has the process been? You have a vice president. You're going mm-hmm. with campaigning. Um, what your actual mission is, like making graphics. You guys got the juice box thing and all yep. that. There's a lot there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, we'll start with like what inspired you sure. to run for it. Yeah. So, I mean, even going back, you you asked what I was involved in as a D group leader. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of my drive for it comes from that. Okay. Um, and so being able to serve as the sophomore class specifically this year has been awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that this is a very cool opportunity for us to like further push better discipleship on campus Mm. um and so like i've been a d group leader and so hey like i here i do not feel like anyone that claims to be a christian can be a christian without being a disciple okay i I don't think that those are mutually exclusive they have to go together Mm. um if i'm going to claim to be a christian i better be a disciple of jesus yeah right and so there are 1,200 maybe people involved with D groups on campus. I like to think that there aren't just 1,200 Christians on campus. Yeah. We're, I, we're all being discipled. And so especially just as we're looking to the general student body, yeah. um, like let's be discipling the whole campus well because yeah. this is a campus of Christians. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. And so I think a lot of my drive for SGA comes from there. So I specifically fruit bearing disciples. It's like, okay, let's be disciples. And I think if we're being good disciples, mm-hmm. um, we're going to be fruit bearing, which means like we're, there's going to be, there's going to be evidence that we are disciples of Christ. Yeah. Our lives are going to look different. We're going to love each other. Well, I mean, even Cedarville's four core values, right? Do you know? Them? Ooh, maybe. Um, <laughs> I'm a tour guide, so I'm cheating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to say I probably don't. I mean, is excellence one of them? Or You're, that- yeah, that's like half of one. So we've got love for God. Love for God. And then that goes into love for others. Love for others. Integrity and conduct integrity. and excellence and effort. Excellence and effort. Okay. And so just in light of that, if we're claiming to be Christians, mm-hmm. those have to be like integral in yeah. our lives, right? Mm-hmm. And so I, a lot of my drive comes from there of like let's have – let's have – really good opportunities for people to grow closer to each other spiritually. Yeah. This is the first one. Like we want to disciple each other in order to be closer spiritually. Um, so that like one, like one idea with that is like, I don't think we pray enough as Christians mm-hmm. just in general. Yeah. I don't think we pray enough as Cedarville students. Yeah. Um, I don't think I pray enough. And so I'm not like, I'm not coming for anybody else's yeah. throat. Like I, I don't pray enough. And so I, I think it'd be really, really neat if we as a campus could come together and be praying together more. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, group I, prayer is powerful. I mean, yeah. Um, I had a worship night last night. Last night was a PB glow dance, yep. which is cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, but prior to that, my bro sis had a little worship night. Cool. Um, not the whole bro sis came, but we had a smaller group of people. It was sure. so cool. So we did seven songs. Okay. Um, I played acoustic guitar and sang. And it was like, uh, obviously, we made a bunch of mistakes when doing it. Like, it yeah. was not a big production like Chapel, which is really cool. And I think having, a, like, a not quote-unquote perfect, but a good production is yeah. good. I feel like glorifies God and excellence that we do. Mm-hmm. But having, like, that just, like, more intimate, like, yeah. showing our mistakes is, like, I played that a little wrong at the beginning. <laughs> but, like, we got into it, and then, like, your heart condition was correct. It's like, sure. oh, I'm not here for an amazing guitarist because I'm not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, that was not my goal. It's I want to be good enough so I can lead worship. Sure. to um, 
worship God and lead others in it. Yeah. And so it was just like feeling the heart condition of like, oh, this isn't like, like epic, extravagant, like yeah. almost perfect. But it's like I'm I'm wor- worshiping God right now in my yeah. words and like I'm closing my eyes. I'm just like, oh, I'm here. Sure. Um, so I think the practices, like obviously it's through faith we are saved, but like some, like the works feed our faith, make us alive in it. Mm-hmm. So having um, moments of worship, um, praying with others, when two or more are gathered in my name, there I am with them. Sure. Um, that's Ma- in Matthew 28. I think that's yeah. where it's from. I saw that on your, uh, on your story. story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would posted that cause I just felt like that was a really amazing moment last night with the brosis. So yeah, I think, um, encouraging works in the faith, I don't think is a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Relying on it yeah. isn't necessarily true and like full, but like encouraging, like, come on guys, let's do it. Yeah. Let's go. Let's disciple each other. Let's evangelize. Let's pray. Let's worship. And worship in our actions. Yeah. Um, what I forget what it was. It was either my D group, or oh no, it was my uh, New Testament class with Doctor okay. Greg Kowser. Yep. I love him. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. awesome. And uh, he was talking about uh, like, and everything we do it is a form of, of worship. Yeah. So um, whether it's what we eat, we breathe, what we wear, how we work, sure. how we sing it's all a form of worship or I guess then disobedience. Yeah. Um, so yeah, works are powerful. Sure. It's interesting. Yeah. I've, and so I've spent a lot of time in first John just this past week. I was, so I was in Cuba over spring break. Okay. I'll get to that in just wow. a second. But w- like while there, it was just like, I spent a lot of time in first John. Yeah. Um, just looking through that, like uh, just over and over. I was reading it. Yeah. Um, and just with that, it's like, if we're, if we're living, like if if we claim to be in Christ, um, then we we ought to be l- like walking in the light. That's what chapter one says. It's like we we need to be walking in the light as Christians, not walking yeah. in darkness. Um, and I I so I preached Wednesday night at a church plant in Cuba. Oh, okay. um, yeah, but and just part of that that just sticks out to me still was just actually my phone locked. This is a funny story. My phone was suddenly disabled so i had no notes and just kind of like uh, went for it but <laughs> um this is just like guys if, if i'm gonna claim to be a fisherman but i have no idea how to fish yeah. then you tell me that i'm a liar mm-hmm. and if i claim to be a baker and i don't know how to make bread <laughs> then you're gonna tell me i'm a liar yeah and then if it, if i say that i'm a barber but i have no idea how to cut hair and mm-hmm. you're gonna tell me that i'm a liar yeah so if I claim to be a Christian and I look nothing like Christ, then I'm a liar. Yeah. Um, and so just with that, if, we, if we're striving to be fruit-bearing disciples, yeah. if I'm going to claim to be a disciple of Christ, then you're going to see fruit in my life because yeah. I'm going to be changed because the blood of Christ has covered the weight of my sins. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's kind of where I'm coming from, um, specifically looking at First John. So, yeah. That's yeah. Impactful. So you said you went to Cuba. Yes. Cuba, so your spring break trip with Go. Yep, not Go, um, actually. No, it wasn't with No, Go. so it was with it. my home church. Oh, um, okay. So this was my third time in Cuba. Wow. Um, my dad goes down all the time. Okay. And so um, it, was, it was really neat. It was actually, it was a team of 11 guys from back home. Okay. Not, not 11 guys, 11 people from back home. So there were like a few older couples, um, the, the Kiesels, my parents, like just fun other couples. Yeah. But then there were 11 Cedarville guys that went too. Okay. Um, so it was, a, it was a team of 22, and we went down and just, like, had a blast. Like, it was it was so good to be able to serve alongside all of them. Yeah. But so um, what, all, what was the main purpose of this uh, specific visit to Cuba? Sure. So the Cuban churches aren't allowed to have, like, they aren't allowed to be larger than 30 people. Oh, um, okay. If, like, the, the home churches or whatever are not allowed to be more than 30 people. Um, and so with that, you got to have a bunch of new pastors yeah. like regularly. Right. Wow. Um, so it was, it was a lot of training up new pastors mm-hmm. um, because you've got pastors that have never been pastors before. They maybe not weren't planning on being a pastor, but their yeah. church is at 32 people. And so you have to split. Yeah. Um, 
And so, and so with that, it was like Monday through Wednesday in the mornings, we were, we were training up new pastors, mm. um, just teaching and stuff. Yeah. Um, actually, Sunday, I was able to go to a house church and preach there. Oh, nice. um, so preached through Exodus cool. 12. And so yeah. that was awesome, just looking at like the Passover mm. and how that points to Jesus. So okay. that was really cool. Um, and then Monday through Wednesday nights, uh, or actually Monday and Tuesday night, we were going out with with some kids in the area. So we, we got kind of got split into four groups. Mm-hmm. Um, we're just working with, with those groups specifically, like those parts of town of Havana yeah. um, for the week. And so it was Monday through Wednesday mornings as we were going around, we were like evangelizing, um, doing like church um, visitations, I guess, yeah. um, in, in those specific areas. Mm-hmm. So I spent Monday morning teaching pastors, um, at the at the main place, but then Tuesday, Wednesday went out and was able to just go pray with pray with people, which was awesome. And then just like, hey, like, yeah. there's this guy named Jesus, and and just down there, that the atmosphere is different enough. Where in the U.S., where you have a lot of, oh, you're like yeah, Jesus, of course, I I know yeah, who that is. Know of him. Yeah, you like know of even if I don't like believe in him, I know of him, mm-hmm. right? And so I, there's not as much. Of there's the, no knowledge of him. There? So there, there is, okay. um, but it's <laughs> there's some groups that it's like, yeah, like I'm a Christian, and then like there, there's a lot, quite a bit of Catholicism mm. down there as well. But then there are just like there's just people that don't even know the gospel, wow. which is it's just different from the U.S. Yeah. They're like we don't see that. Even even my friends back home that aren't Christians. No, no, of, uh, no the of the gospel, or yeah, of or of a, Jesus, a yeah. Of it, yeah. And so, just just a little bit different dynamic down yeah. there. Um, so it's an interesting dynamic. Like, yeah, like the fact that you can go to a country, or I guess part of the U.S., depending. And it's like yeah. people genuinely haven't even heard the word of Jesus, the name, or the gospel. Yeah. So it's like a different way of convincing. It's like here's sure. a new idea. It's amazing. Like yeah, it's salvation. Whereas in the U.S., it's almost like a you have to like have a an argument or a debate over it, like a convincing yeah. kind of like you, like we don't bring them to faith, God does, but yeah. we have to present it to them. Sure. So it's like they already know it. It's just you have to. There's a little combative nature mm-hmm. to it compared to other countries. Yeah, which is interesting. So I don't know. I, I guess I didn't tell you what I actually want to be doing. When I, upon graduating. Oh, wait, what, so, what's the plan? Yeah, so the, the plan is missions. Okay. So, like, long-term missions. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm looking, like, North Africa, South Asia-ish. Oh, wow. Okay. Somewhere there. Nice. I'm in my second year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, so, actually, my dad just called me this morning. Um, he was at a missions meeting thing at our church back home. Mm-hmm. I guess there's a guy that's, like, from the denomination that's working on getting a team together to go to India um, okay. next year so as of this morning i guess i might be going to india <laughs> next summer nice um, that'd be awesome so that, i'm pretty excited for what that part of india do i don't um, i don't know he didn't okay. he didn't tell me um but i don't know i'm in cross-cultural ministry right now too oh, okay um nice. spending a lot of time with people in south asia hmm. okay um spending yeah spending a lot of time with people in south asia um just learning from them okay so nice yeah That's cool and how is your experience, so uh, biblical studies, uh, what classes do you have uh, this semester, professors, like yeah. how has your experience been academically? Sure. Um, so right now I'm in cross-cultural ministry yeah. um, and then discipleship, uh, Greek too. So how many credits is Greek? Four right now. Four. So we have class Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday mornings. Yes. Wow. So yeah, it's 9 a.m., but it's better than the 8 a.m. I yeah. feel bad for that. <laughs> but... Um, so yeah, so Greek cross-cultural Greek discipleship, mm-hmm. and then I have Theo two right now, and what other class do I have? I have no idea what my other class. Oh, hermeneutics. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah. Um, nice. My little brother calls it hermenology. Hermenology. Yeah. So little Sibs weekend was funny when he came and was uh, like, "Hey, when's hermenology?" Well, it's hermen- <laughs> and everybody's like, "What, what is that?" Yeah. <laughs> But That's funny. I don't know. Nice. overall, really enjoy my classes. Yeah. So next year will be next year will be fun. I I have one class with Dr. Bennett. That's okay. it, it's called Islam and Missions. Um, that's gonna be so good. Yeah. But, Is it? Well, you guys read the? Do they use the Quran? Is that yeah? Islam? That's Islam. That's, yeah. Okay. I uh, my friends went. They were in uh, 
uh, World Religions. Okay. Like one of the Gen Eds. Yep. And so they went to a mosque, a fairly nice one, like 20 minutes away. Sure. Uh, I forget what town it's in. And they were given Qurans by the leaders of the mosque and stuff. And okay. Like little paper. And, like, they're really respectful. It's interesting, like, different aspects yeah. of the religion. The people are respectful. Sure. Um, and so I have that. I plan to read it this summer. Okay. Upon, like, I have one book I'm doing a month, give or take. Like, okay. productivity, self-help. Um, I really enjoy learning about time management. But I thought it would be interesting to read it just to see... Like some, like I've seen some debates online. Sure. It's like a, a, someone of Islam, Buddhism, or a Muslim is like debating a Christian on faith. It's fairly civilized, but they seem to know more than the Christian almost. Hmm. Like they are very well versed in our faith. Yeah. In order to be able to help their debate yeah. against it, of like saying like, hey, I studied this, and then the Christian's like, I don't even know about that at all, really. Yeah. So it's like. Whenever it comes to almost like a scholarly defense of your faith, I feel mm-hmm. like it's very essential for some people to really like learn of the other religion. Sure. So then you can say like, hey, yours says this. This is why I think mine is correct. Yeah. Or just how we can figure that out. Because yeah. I don't know in India what the main religion is. Hin- Hinduism. Hinduism. But then there's there's quite a bit of um, like Islam in there we're okay. looking at. So I, w- so I want to say it's like 27%. 27%? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like um, learning their culture, obviously. You need to learn the cultures of where we're going. Yeah. But, like, what their beliefs are, like, the actual scholarly, academic aspects of sure. their faith, just like we're learning of the Bible. Yeah. It's like being, diving into the Word in a scholarly manner, looking at the culture surrounding the Bible. Like, yeah. Hauser really dives into the culture sure. aspect of specifically Paul. Okay. Which is interesting because you always learn... Like, it seems like we're almost like a, we're an application faith. We always sure. look at the Bible for what it can apply to, which yeah. is good. But learning, like, the specific cultural uh, formalities of the Bible and why they said what they said. Sure. Like, why did they say that? Yeah. It's like it makes absolute sense if you realize this reason. Yeah. Like, we're, we just learned about the Ritors versus the Super Apostles. Okay. In Corinthians. Yeah. And it's like you don't really get all the references when you're reading. It's like, man, why is Paul being so, like, kind of mean? Yeah. Like, like, he's like, no one at him, bro. It's like a diss track on them. <laughs> and, like, but it's like it makes sense because they were, like, the rhetors were, like, very extravagant entertainers. Sure. They're always like, uh, you need to have a pride because you're cool and you're worth it. Yeah. And, like, that's just not correct at all. Like, mm. um, Paul was humble and people saw him. He's like, that dude, like, how is he humble like that? He should be, like, be like, yeah, he, man, he's hot you know? stuff. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so it's, it's interesting. Um, sure. Like, learning of the other face to be able to do yeah. that. Yeah. So. I think it's kind of devastating that, like, we collectively as Christians don't have that understanding of other faiths as well as we probably should. Yeah. Um, it's like, how, how do we expect to be able to reach people? Yeah. If we don't have any idea of what they're talking about. So. Yeah, because I think, like Paul says, too, it's like, um, become like the rich to win over them. Become like the poor to win over them. Become like, and not become as in, envelop all their ways, but like, respect the culture. Sure. Like, be in the culture, but understand what is sin and not. Sure. And refrain from that. So yeah. it's like, some people need to be really good at learning American football. Yeah. And play it, or be in fantasy football. Because you got to reach those people. Yep. Um, figure out how to, like, I don't even know how to figure this out yet, but, like, frats, sororities, those particular groups at public universities, how can we reach them? Yeah, sure. While being, like, like you, there you kind of have to be fun somehow, but in a good way. Yeah. It's like, how can we have a clean party? Mm-hmm. Like, have you, ever, have you heard of the Cove down in Nashville? Not the Cove in the BTS? No. Okay. So, it's <laughs> called the Cove, and it's a Christian nightclub. Okay. So it's 18 plus, no alcohol, clean music only. Um, and it says, like, for dress code, be respectful of God. So they don't have crazy limitations on, like, clothing. But it's like, we trust in you. Be respectful to God. Honor him in what you wear. Sure. And it's like a night of worship, prayer moments, and then, like, dancing. Like, church okay. clap, stuff like that. <laughs> and so it, 
I don't know what I think of that yet. It's interesting because, like, uh-huh. is there a way to make it? Because, like, Daniel had a moment in the – David. David had a moment in the Bible where he danced with all of his might yep. to the point where one of his wives was like, why the heck are you doing that? It's kind of embarrassing. But he's like, bro, I'm dancing for God. Mm-hmm. And I'm having fun for, like, in the name of him because he wants us to have joy. Yeah. So it's in finding the dynamic of how can we do that as well. So sure. it'd be interesting to experience that once. Like that's I've never heard of that. Yeah, they that's kind of interesting. A new they it's a, the sixteenth, so they're okay. having it tonight. They have specific events. Oh, okay. So it's not open every night because there's not the okay. population to support it sure. realistically. But they have like a once a month thing. They're doing a March Madness themed one tonight, and so it's like uh, everyone wears jerseys, NBA jerseys, stuff like that. Okay, and it's like from seven to late at night. In, okay, and you said it's in Nashville. Nashville, right now. Okay, they have one in Nashville. I think they're trying to start one in Florida somewhere because there's a good okay. amount of population there. Sure. But, like, it's just an interesting concept. That's interesting, yeah. Like, to try and reach that sector of people who, like, obviously go to nightclubs and stuff, see, like, hey, we can have fun, be joyful, but be God-honoring what yeah. we do. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's interesting. Huh. Interesting idea. Just like Pep. Like, I, was, I talked yeah. with Isabel, president. She's yep. like, she's awesome. I want to have, like, fun, God-honoring like experience like can we dance but be faithful yeah it's like i think you can like yeah i think david was wearing like a white robe or something when he did it and he was like he's going crazy yeah um dancing in the streets that would have been interesting to see um so yeah it's trying to figure out how we can reach people sure and just serve them like tell them like i'm really here for you i'm not just trying to be a salesman yeah um learning sales skills is good i think (laughs) But just to be able to communicate, I think it's good sure. for communication. But just serve people. Be good to them. Um, like in Utah, they talked about it at Chapel. It's like the one group, they just like, they just serve so much. They even won like the mayor's award for serving the community. Really? It's like, can't we just do that and like yeah. be the best servants out there or be yeah. the best we can be? Yeah. Um, I think that would shine the light of Christ mm-hmm. as much as telling someone about it. Sure. So it's really cool. So. Um, yeah, so I guess you touched on, like, SGA, your official mission. Yeah. Um, uh, half wanna, of it. Do you want to yeah, 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 sorry. on that? Sorry, we, we were talking about that for a second. Yeah, yeah, so there's this side of it that's like, hey, I think it would be very good for us to be praying together more. Okay. Um, and so, from, like, a spiritual side of things, but also, like, it's, it's SGA. It is also, I mean, this is literally goes back to what we were just talking about. It's also okay for us to be having fun. Yeah. Um, and I think specifically in a discipleship aspect, I think that's really important. Um, I mean, I think back to my day group. It's like three of the four, three of the first four weeks, we just hung out. Yeah. Like we went to Young's and yeah. then we just hung out and talked and like that, like that kind of thing. So I think it's really important that we be one praying, but then on top of that, we can we can also just have fun together. Yeah. And then because of that, because I mean, not everyone's involved in something like a D group, but if we're able to just go have fun at yeah. events and then turn around and like let's say I wind up back in the dorm with some of my buddies, but we just had this great night, and we're we're feeling a little bit closer or whatever. Like I was up till three o'clock two nights ago just talking to one of my friends yeah. for hours. Yeah. And and so just even to have opportunities like that, mm-hmm. um, I, I think that SGA indirectly can be kind of driving a lot yeah. of those efforts. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like, obviously, I, I, you can't, like, mandate, like, ooh, talk to your friends talk till 3 them. o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, but yeah. I, I think just in, hey, we're going to grow closer to each other spiritually. We're going to go grow closer to each other just as brothers in Christ or sisters yeah. in Christ. We're going to be encouraging, like, just good discipleship. In, in doing so your time at Cedarville isn't just going to be like a four year church camp. Yeah. That's, that's not what this is. No. And so we, we want to be pushing people to be growing, mm-hmm. to be Christians, disciples and hold that same flame that they have at Cedarville for the rest of their lives. Yeah. I, I think it's really important. That this isn't church camp. Mm-hmm. This that where you, you go and it's a great week. And then you have a, like, there's a spiritual high when you get back then, and then maybe it dies off in a year. Yeah. Like there, there's a, there's a way to do this where you come and you have the best four years of your life. Yeah. And from there, it just keeps going. <laughs> like, yeah. Like it, a spiritual high, like, build it so it just keeps going. It, yeah. Yeah that, yeah. that should not just fall off. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think if we're driving discipleship well, 
mm-hmm. and I am fully rooted in Christ, yeah. then my life is going to look different. And that's not going to die off the year after I leave Cedarville, but rather we're going to continue loving Christ for the rest of our lives. Um, yeah. So I, that, that's kind of the, my whole okay. um, goal there, I guess. Yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if this is a weird question or not, but it's just like, um, how did you come to find, like, vice president? How did you guys form sure. your team or just decide to run yeah. together? Yeah. Um, so I, I was kind of there in my head of what I was just explaining okay. um, was kind of my goal. And then it was like, all right, well, if I'm going to do this, I need to pick somebody to yeah. do it with me. Um, and so I care specifically mm-hmm. a lot of respect for her. Um, she was a sting leader this past year. Okay. Like not a, a sting leader. Sorry. She was in charge of sting this past year. Uh, like she was the sting director, um, the sting queen. You've <laughs> probably heard. <laughs> but, um, nice. And so I, I think she was absolutely incredible at that. Um, and a, a lot of the, like, maybe logistical, like, base camp stuff, um, mm-hmm. she's really, really, really good at. Okay. Um, additionally, like, relationally, I think she's a blast to be with. Um, okay. She's just a That's fun good. person. Yeah. Um, but maybe where in areas where I'm not as great, like, base camp. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. That's just a task website thing that we use for campus experience stuff. Yeah. Yep. Um but in something like that where maybe I'm not as great at that, I think she's really, really good at that. And so I, th- I think we work with each other well. Um, yeah, you have your strengths. Yeah. And you're going to dive into those because you mm-hmm. can't stretch yourself too thin. And then yeah. in your weaknesses, delegate. Yeah. yeah. Which is interesting. But then also, do you – actually, no, you're a freshman. I okay, am. never mind. I'm sorry. So last year for Fall Bible Conference, mm-hmm. um, so not – I mean, when I was a freshman, um, this guy named Brian White spoke. Okay. Um, and it was absolutely incredible. That's Karis's dad. Oh, uh, cool. So even from there, it was like, who is this person? Like, I don't really know her, but her dad's cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And yeah. so just being able to, like, grow a relationship with her, especially at the start of this year, um, was really, really neat, too. Um, I'd say we've gotten quite a bit closer just even in the campaigning stuff. Oh. Yeah, like, even where we maybe weren't as good of friends or whatever beforehand um like it, like we never hung out or anything yeah um but i i really really um think she's just wonderful so awesome. yeah how was the campaign experience i've heard from some <laughs> people like it's quite hectic sure it can be um what what does it entail like what was the sure. time period of like when you could do stuff yeah and all that um so we applied month and a half ago maybe um and then we had an interview with brian burns of Uh, like hey this is what we're thinking is this possible and then he answers yes or no (laughs) um and then he approved us to run so we were like sick (laughs) um and so from there you wait about a maybe a month actually um and then like the last I want to say it was February 26th. Yeah, it was like the last week of February. Yeah, yeah. You were allowed to start campaigning on that Monday. Um, and from there, on that Friday, obviously, we're primary elections. Um, so we made it through primary elections. Yeah. <laughs> and so now we get to this this last part. Um, and so there was spring break. And now, technically, we're still in campaign season. Okay. So we're allowed to be campaigning right now. And then this upcoming Thursday is the uh, the actual election. Actual election, okay. Um, is there a uh, SGA chapel? There is, yes. Okay. Yeah, actually, you haven't experienced one of those either. Okay, so actually I have. Okay. So Hawaii. one of the <laughs> visit days, my, okay. co- my cousin uh, came here for a semester, um, transferred okay. out just because she wanted to go um, to Geneva. Um, and uh, so I came with her. Okay. I ended up visiting there like seven times. I had a lot of oh my gosh. here, like a couple in the summer when there was nobody, a couple here with official yeah. stuff, all access day, all that. Um, I'm second gen. So that's okay. Thing. Like a lot of my mom's side, uh, my dad and his sister. All a lot of here. family here. A lot of family okay. from here. So we came, it was like in the fall after COVID, I think. Okay. So you guys were still in the field house. I wasn't even here. Oh, yeah. I guess you weren't yeah. here. That's true. She's a year older than you. So. They were still in the field house. Okay. But this is to the point, so it might have been the spring then where masks weren't used. Okay. People weren't really socially distancing in the field house. Like, you're supposed to be, like, 
six foot blocks of every person. <laughs> and and there was like groups of like twenty, and then <laughs> groups of like twenty. And it's like all the processes were together, so that was fun. But it was the SGA Chapel when Rufus was running. Okay. So I met Rufus. Do you know? Who yeah, he is? yeah, I know Rufus. So Rufus met us right over there. Okay. Um, my family when we came here. He was okay. one of the first upper class when I interacted with, and he was like. I'm not going to do his accent, but it's like he just sounded so nice. He yeah. was like, hey, guys, how's it going? Are you at Cedarville? you excited? Like, great experience. And now I'm like, yeah. he's on stage. I just met that guy <laughs> he was like, two Whoa. hours ago. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. So he was running, and I, he, I think he won. Yeah, yeah he, he did. Yeah. He did. So that was cool. So that was cool. I did experience it with Rufus. Okay. So that was cool. That was <laughs> Very cool neat. Yeah. yeah. So – yeah, so pretty much it's just like we'll go up, we'll answer a few questions, yeah. Um, and then I want to say we have like a short speech type thing. Okay. Um, so I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, right? But cool. I think it'll, I think it'll be good. Okay. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. So it's gonna be fun. So, yeah. yeah. It's coming up this week. See what time it is. Oh, we got some time. I think we're good. Okay. Um, let me think. So I guess since we're both in, uh, I like to refer back to D groups. Just cause yeah. Yeah. Like, that's your mission here. Sure. Um, we're both doing Radically Whole yep. by David Gibson. Um, why did you choose that book, or how does the process? Are you able to pick yeah. the book that you do? So or you put list? you put a top three. Top so three. there's a list. So first, I mean, obviously, you, have, you apply to be a D group leader, mm -hmm. and then from there, it's like, all right, these are the studies that we're doing. Yeah. Rank your top three. Okay. So you put your top three in, and then Aaron Cook, I don't know how he does it, but you wind up with, like, one of your top three. Okay. So radically whole is actually my third option. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, but I've absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. I love my DL group. Yeah. Um, my DC is Jake Duvall. Mm -hmm. Um, he, that's fun, but just, it's just been wonderful. And so I am so, so happy that I wound up in the group that I'm in. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of a funny process. Nice. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. radically whole, it's about it's a study of James. Mm -hmm. uh, talks about um, just dividing of the heart mm -hmm. um, with Christ. Um, what chapter are you guys on right now? Do you, <laughs> I think we're on eight or something. I don't know. <laughs> I think we're on four. On four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure we just wrapped up four. Okay. So interesting. Yeah. So, um, oh, I'm trying to remember. What's four about again? I, um, I we're right now. We just finished. Uh, seven which is on or eight which is on wealth okay which is interesting. yeah i mix up all of my chapters so i can't talk. i've also yeah. read the book like four or five times yeah, at this yeah, point so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh we're right in the like love doing that section oh yeah like, okay yeah there's a yeah. whole section about love and all that. yeah well the, yeah because there's one chapter on love there's a chapter on doing yes but yeah yeah so, so it's uh it's been my book is broken, so the binding it's broken. It will sit perfectly flat at page one hundred. It's just okay. like right there. How did you do that? I don't know. Okay. Like I didn't like because it's not like I went through it so much that the whole binding is really yeah, yeah. creased because then it would all be kinda like that, but it's literally dead center. Mine on page one hundred broke. And it wasn't like that when I got it. I got is it there, are there any like super important things on page one hundred? No, the page is still there. It's just the binding is like cracked there. So okay. it's just like literally sits flat on the table. So yeah, so is that is that page like rich with information or something? Oh no. Okay. I, I don't even remember what page it was on because it was chapter five. Okay. I think. Sounds yeah. like you should read that page again. Yeah, man. Keep going back <laughs> yeah. to that page every time I read it. The Lord's trying to tell you something. something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um Yeah, so that's funny. And uh it's been going through with Caleb Steppy, my DK yeah, yeah. here. Um, which has been a blast. Um, I, he's taking, there's a method of where the leader talks 30% and you let everyone else talk 70% or something like that. Sure. Um, he talked about. So he really lets us like speak what we feel like we've gotten from it. Good. And uh, it's been really impactful. Um, then like bouncing off of each other. So it's like we have a challenge from every. <laughs> <up with>? <laughs> <laughs> Um, we have a challenge from every chapter. Okay. It's like uh, go have, schedule a one-on-one -on -one with one of the guys in yep. that week, talk about their week, and then take a challenge from this chapter and apply it. Sure. So one of the challenges we did was practicing a Sabbath. Sure. Um, so not necessarily like a – I don't know if it's considered a full Sabbath, but just being able to like really 
fully rest. Just take a breather. Yeah. Take a breather on like a Sunday or something because yeah. it's kind of difficult. Yeah. But pick something to Sabbath from and replace with rest and time with God. Sure. So um, that was really good practice. And then review, like re- reviewing that with the guy you did a one-on-one with Yeah. was such a blessing. I did a... Yeah. On Sundays, I don't have my phone with me until after my friend group does, like, a lunch right after church. Oh, cool. So we'll eat at Chuck's at, like, 1 o'clock. Okay. And then um, after that, um, I'll go get my phone and my schoolwork. Yeah. I go to Beans usually to study. Yep. Beans is a great place to go. Great place. Yeah. Uh, Saturday mornings. Yep. I like to go there Saturday mornings because there's a lot of, like, old guys there. Yes. So you have a random conversation with them. <laughs> Just, like, I had a guy sit down beside me when I was waiting for coffee. He was like, yeah. yeah. I have to wait for my stuff, and I can't stand for a long time. Can I sit here? I was like, go for it. Go for it. Yes, so, please. Cool. He's like, you go to school over here? I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. I go to school. <laughs> so it's cool random interactions. That yeah. Being intentional, trying to allow it to happen is cool. Yeah. Saturday morning beans. Actually, Saturday mornings a lot. It's, I generally wind up at beans from like 9 to 6 on Saturdays. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's – uh. Yeah, having the practice of, like, no phone, Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, it's time. It's like you wake up and see either, like, the Bible or food or with your friends. Yeah. Or, and then go to church. Sure. Um, it's been a huge, huge thing to not have the temptation of, like, looking at your phone for a second while you're in a Yeah, sleep. yeah. Because, like, sometimes that can get long and you're tired. And it's like, well. Yeah. But it's like it's not even there. So you, like, have to focus. Yeah, you're just locked in. Like, it feels like I have gotten a lot more from Good. all the stuff. Good. That's really cool. So it's. Yeah, it's a it's a cool book. Sure. Like the stuff that you can apply from and then learn from James in almost a lighthearted manner to an yeah. extent. Because James is a hefty book. Yeah. There's like, a lot in there. There's a lot there. Yeah. Even though it's – is it six chapters or seven? Uh, it's shorter. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a short one. Um, Hefty book. But, yeah, it's like if you can look at it in a more bright way. I don't, I don't know if I'd say it's a bright book. It's, it's still a pretty deep book Yeah, like once you get into it. but It's a, it's a very – uh, applicable book mm-hmm. though yeah, um, applicable. so I mean just as we're talking about like okay how can I be applying the book of James I think that definitely is like okay if we're gonna try to apply a book this is probably a pretty easy one to yeah. apply yeah for sure. um, I don't know one thing so the book's called Radically Whole mm-hmm. right and so just one thing that I had my whole D group do one night was just hey let's all get our books out and we're going to write something that is currently making us broken mm-hmm. in the back of the book um, and so <laughs> we're just like writing anything and everything in the yeah. back of this book. Um, and so it, it's just been a neat reminder of like, Hey, this is something that at the start of the year had me broken. Mm-hmm. And so how can I be working to be repairing that? Yeah. Um, radically whole. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I'm, I'm really excited for the end of the year when we're able to just all sit down together and go, okay. How, uh, how have we grown yeah. here? Like this spot specifically that we identified nine months ago. How have we grown? Um, so yeah, Working towards a goal. Yeah. It's interesting because, yeah, yeah um, sometimes, like, some, a lot of people talk about it's like a goal is how you can actually achieve something. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're just like kind of like quote unquote aimlessly going about or just like leaving it wide open. It's like all my problems. Yeah. That's a lot to tackle, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah come it's, on. Like, it's not going to happen. We're broken people. <laughs> yeah. So it's like pick one thing at a time like like benjamin franklin it's like he 12 weeks he picked 12 different things and each week he worked on one of them yeah just one at a time go through it um he tried to do that out of like trying to be sinless to an extent but it's a good practice of like pick one thing and just come on really work on it yeah um and so something as big as that like in nine months or however long um can give you a sense of accomplishment too which not necessarily a pride thing but just yeah make you feel good about like you worked towards like, trying hey, to be better. I worked hard on this for a year. Yeah. And I'm just seeing that I was growing because of that. I think that's an okay thing to feel. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'd agree. So awesome. Well this has been an amazing time. Yeah. Um do you have anything you would like to say to the people of Cedarville, people out there before we uh end this? Do you, is there anything you want me to say? No. I Nothing in particular. So if you just want to say hi or whatever, I don't care. Hey, Cedarville. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for coming on, taking the time on a Saturday. Uh, well, college students, you're involved with a lot, very yep. busy. So it was a 
just glad we were able to put this together. Yeah, thanks for so, having me. It's yeah. been a blast. Yeah, it has. Get so. to know you a little better. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. It's awesome. So, all right, guys. Thank you very much. If you made it this far, um, this is a great conversation. I hope you learned a lot about Landon and just um, everything that we talked about. Um, please leave some comments if you have any other questions about the topics we talked about. Um, if you want to visit Cedarville, um, tour guide right here. Maybe get <laughs> yeah. a tour with him. Yeah, yeah. He'll give you the run. Um, please like and subscribe. I'm Cedarville. Um, Voting is coming up for SGA, and we'll see what happens. Thank you for watching. Love you all. Bye-bye. Oh, yes. Sweet. That Did I pass? Awesome. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> 54.